Hello and welcome to my Scratch tutorial. Today I will be showing you how to make a catch game so let's get started. So hover your mouse over here and click on the choose sprite. Today I'm going to go for the bowl. Next go to choose a background. I'm going to choose the Jurassic one. So to start with we need to get our sprite to move left and right when we press the left and right arrow keys. Go to the motion section and drag out change x by 10. This causes our sprite to move right. So now we want this to happen when we click the right arrow. To do this, go to events section and drag out the when space key pressed. Click on the drop down option and change it to right key. Now for coding the left arrow. Again, drag a change x by 10 block, but type in negative 10 instead. This causes the ball to move left. For coding the falling object, we will be needing another sprite. Go to the sprite menu and choose one. I'm going to go for the ball. What we want the ball to do is for it to start at a random position at the top of the screen and come down to the bottom. So the way to do that would be to drag the set x and y position block which is in the motion section now we want the y position to remain a constant but we want a random generated x position go to operators and drag the pick random from block input the numbers negative 219 and positive 219 we are doing this because we are giving a range for the ball to choose any x position but we are keeping the y coordinate the same to make the ball fall to the bottom of the screen, we will need to alter its Y coordinate. To do this, go to the motion section and drag a change Y block. Replace the current number to negative 5. We can alter this later, but make sure it remains negative as the ball is falling downwards. We want this action to be continuous. How do we do that? Go to the control section and drag out a forever loop block. This ensures that the ball will continuously keep moving downwards. Okay, so let's test the code out. So it is happening, but the ball cannot go further than the bottom of the screen. That's why it keeps getting stuck down here. We need a condition to make the ball go back up and fall down when it is at a certain position. This is when the if-then block comes handy. So, we need a limit for the ball to fall down to. Go to the operator section and drag out a less than block. Change the number to negative 185. From the motion section, slot in a Y position block. Now grab out your if then block from the controls category and put the whole green block into the part of the if bl block. We want the ball to start at the top of the screen at a random position. So right click on the block in our code here and drag it into the part of the block over here. What this code is doing is it's telling the ball that if it's at a position below negative 185, then it should go back up to the top and this code will keep looping over and over again. We need to code the part where the player can gain points when the ball falls in the ball. In the ball's code section, drag out a when flag click block. Add a forever loop onto it from the controls category. Then, we need an if then condition. Get that from the control section and insert it in the forever loop. In the if part over here, add a touching ball from sensing. Now we need to create a variable which tracks our points and how much we have scored. Go to the variable section and click on the make a variable. Name it points. Above the forever loop, add a set points to zero block. This sets the initial score to zero. In between the if then block, add changes points by one from the variables section. If we want to increase the score by a different number, then change it where it says one. Now right click over here to copy the position of the ball and drag it beneath the change points by one like so. A fun thing to do would be to add a sound, so when the player collects the falling item, some sort of sound plays. I have a coin sound, but if you want to browse more sounds, click on the sounds tab and enter the sounds library. There is a lot to choose from. And now we can press on the green flag to test the code, and there you have it. You've coded your own catch game. I hope you found this tutorial useful. And as you can see here, you can always customize your sprites and backgrounds to enhance your projects. Thanks for watching. Bye!